when wine enters, out goes the truth. Benjamin Franklin. This isn't your cliche movie industry podcast, and he is not your cliche host. This is The Red Interview, hosted by actor, photographer, filmmaker, and writer, Ben Tolosa. Film, right? Yes. That's my name. That's my Facebook name. That is your Facebook name. Well, this is Ben Tolosa, and this is the Red Interview podcast. And this is our first episode. It's kind of a pilot episode. And um, you can find us at bentolosastudios.com or at theredinterview.com. And uh, so I always wanted to do a podcast and talk with people. I'm interested in talking too, and because I'm in the, I'm an actor. I'm a, also a field independent filmmaker. I thought, well, let's just uh, bring somebody who is in the same field. So that's when when I met you. I remember we met. Remember where we met? We met in one of those networking events. Yeah. And that was in when was that? Remember? T- 2012, probably. 2012. Yeah. And uh, I remember. Uh, getting to know you and, and like you, uh, we, we were hang, hanging out for a little while. You were really passionate about your documentary, and uh, and I kind of li- liked you. So then we got to be friends on Facebook, and I really something I really liked about you is your passion. I mean, you're such a passionate guy, and the way you were promoting your documentary was really. Uh, really cool to me, you know. You were talking to people, so you were giving these people comics. I remember you gave me a comic that I still have, and and that's why you know I'm looking for people who are passionate and uh, they are cool to hang up with, and uh, that's why I wanted to. When you told me about your documentary, I said, "Oh, that's it," you know. Yeah. I can also talk about about him. So, and in talking about you, uh, tell me, tell me, tell the audience uh, what your what your name is, where where you live. So, go ahead. Well, my name is Felipe Jorge, um, but it's pronounced Jorge, my last name, but just Felipe George. And I live in Haverhill, Massachusetts. It's about a little over an hour away from Boston. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people still haven't heard of the town. It's That's been south. It's south from here. Okay. Um, but it's it's the history of the town is insane. You know, I mean, Haverhill was the developer of shoes for all of New England for some time. And I mean, I don't know the true history, but anyways. I live in Haverhill, and uh, yeah, you said my name and my address. Your, your, your address, uh, and uh, one well, thing. Address, one thing I want to mention before we forget: we are um, the, the name of the podcast, which is the Red Interview. Uh, Red also came to me uh, from Red Wine, and you know, and also it's a color uh, association associated usually with passion. So, um, speaking of old wine, what are we drinking? Uh, yeah, before we forget, uh, Sweet Malbec, this is, uh, I mean, honestly, if this podcast sounds more stuttery as the time goes on, just blame it on the wine. Uh, I have no idea. I, I've never seen this wine before. Birds and Bees. Birds and Bees. And, uh, hopefully, hopefully you get some, um, what's that word called? Um. Uh, Buzz. No, no you, when you get buzz, but it's something when a company says, "Hey, we want a, a sponsor." Oh, Hopefully, sorry. you get a wine sponsor. Yes. Um, right. And that way, we could get drunk and talk. Right. Because <laughs> that's what this whole point is. Right. right. Well, you know, the wine. Uh, there is a phrase from Benjamin Franklin, and I I can't remember exactly the phrase, but 
the phrase is like when the when the wine goes in, the truth comes out. So yeah, we hope that that's gonna yeah be the case in, in this podcast. So tell me a, a little bit about uh, your passion for filmmaking. What happens? I mean, you were like most of us. You were a little boy. You like movies. How did you get to? to like filmmaking and then when did you get to decide to well I'm gonna make something um, well I've always I've always been a fan of movies ever since um, ever since I was a kid um, thankfully living in my house uh, my my mother she let us watch whatever we wanted so you know we I could watch Total Recall If you know, if I was like nine years old, you know, if I wanted to sit down and watch Total Recall, I, I would watch it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always liked watching movies. And then, you know, even instead of playing sports, um, you know, I would just, I would just rather watch a movie uh, that I've seen a bunch of times. You know, it did. We we even do that same stuff today. You know, you see a movie on your shelf. Right. And you'd be like, I've seen the movie a hundred, hundred times. I know how stupid it is, but you'll sit down and watch it anyways. Right. So having that uh, and uh, as the more movies I watch, you notice things and then you start to learn about things, you know, reading behind, behind the scenes uh, about movies and then talking about it with your friends. And it, it just keeps growing and growing until you're like, oh, this is something I want to do. Mm-hmm. And I think in high school I bought a, a camera. Mm -hmm. It was a Panasonic VHSC camcorder, um, which used that little, that mini. Hi -8. Hi -8. It wasn't a high eight. It oh. was um, it was like that VHSC. It was right, a little right, right. thick. Yeah, it's like a little one. yeah, a little yeah. thick tape with yeah, with one uh, thing for the to feed the tape. I remember those, yeah. And uh, I bought one for like 500, and I made like some movies, and but I basically just went around recording, kind of like a, a voyeur, mm -hmm. uh, as that will parlay into a documentary later on in my life. Um, did you did you do any editing? But I I didn't do anything. I just all I did was just buy the thing just to record. Yeah. And then um, but then when I when I um, tried was uh i started doing some editing with the a vcr that i had so uh, i don't know what what i was doing i was using two of them and then using uh using one for the uh, the vhsc with the adapter oh yeah and then take uh then using a, a blank vcr tape and you know kind of copying Linear. copying yeah Linear. copying uh copying footage and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, it was just um, yeah. I'm just rambling, but uh, because it's the wine. It's the wine. Uh, nice. But after doing that, you know, with the camcorder and everything, um, just nothing happened. Like yeah. nothing. There was no motivation of me saying, oh, "I want to be a film director. I want to do this." Like I always liked movies. I I wanted to go to a school, but it just. It just didn't happen until like years later, um, like when I was working on a job at 2000, 2005 in Florida, podcasting was brand new. So I would go online while sitting at my desk and, you know, looking for movie podcasts because I still like movies. And there's a point to where this is going. But um, when I was listening to the podcast, I found one called The Hollywood Saloon. Mm -hmm. And they talked about movies, and they they weren't professionals. It was just two guys, that one was in Houston, one was somewhere else, and they would just talk about their experiences with movies, and you know when they went to college to take film. And again, they're not big shots; they're just guys living in different states. But the way they talked, uh, their knowledge about movies, it was just so good that it kind of. It kind of kicked my memory in the nuts, you know, saying, you know, it was like, bam, like, hey, Phil, you wanted to make movies. Remember that time a long time ago? And it was like, oh, shit, you're right. And I kept listening to their shows. The more and more I listened to their shows, the more I'm like, this is what I want to do. I want to make movies. Mm -hmm. And it's, just, it's something that I wanted to do a long time ago. Why didn't I do it? Why? What, what the hell happened? And after listening to those shows... That's all I wanted to do was make 
just make movies. And, you know, unfortunately, I couldn't go to film school. Mm -hmm. Film school is expensive. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, it's like you get a free education online. Okay. Pretty much that's what it was, a free education. Like, I started looking at movies differently. Like, the same movies I watched mm -hmm. over and over, I watched them again and looked at them different. You know, like... Mm -hmm. Rocky Four. I started watching that. Like all these movies I had that I've seen, like I just started not hating, but really dissecting them and developing. Mm -hmm. That's how you develop your your mind as an editor. You just keep watching. You're like, well, why didn't they do that? They could have taken that out instead of leaving it in. And so the you know that was pretty much my my education of of learning how to make movies. And did you did you watch? Uh, I imagine you. You did, you did uh, like I did. Uh, you used to watch uh, bonus, bonus features. In yeah, the, the bonus features. Yeah. Yeah, that's something you really like. That and, that's, and you learn things about. Well, that that's why that's why I kept buying so many DVDs. Was remember when DVDs came out? Was it like they had the commercials? They're like, oh, you know, five point one digital audio, uh, like, interactive menu, and the commentary, commentary. Com yeah, commentary by filmmakers and actors and. Uh, I, I was watching the commentaries, um, going for the bonus scenes, and yeah, it's like, why wouldn't you want to see how everything exactly. was made? Yes. And the thing that sucks now about Blu-rays is there are very little of them. Right, right. I could, I have a Blu-ray and a DVD of two movies, and the DVD, I'll, I'll put it more because they have all these extras and, right. and all that. But that's where, that's where, you know. That's where knowledge is, and the, the bonuses, and the, the commentaries, and the deleted scenes, anything. Just buy the buy the movie and just watch all the right. watch all the features, mm -hmm. you know. And that you'll find everything, and yeah. you you can find one thing that you'll learn, right. you know. May not be all of it, but you'll take that one thing and you'll carry it with you. Yeah. Another thing uh, I I uh, I I did uh, I do uh, occasionally is uh, as an actor. Another thing I do is like there is this website IMDb P or something like that. There is a database of scripts. So sometimes I find a, a scene that I really love, and I I go and look for the original script because sometimes the director decides to take you know a bunch of lines out of that scene. So I'm trying to understand why the director made that decision, yeah. and you know, make my own conclusions. But and sometimes it's cool to kind of learn. Okay, oh, you know, if I ever play the scene or, you know, as a practice, then I will add that yeah. extra line yeah. too and see what happens. So, so yeah, cool. That's that's interesting. And when did you get to to kind of do your like like your first kind of uh, serious projects? I mean, besides shooting whatever with your, with, your, with your friends or something that was more like a serious thing okay you know I've, I've been shooting with my friends many times uh, now I'm gonna do a little something what was how old were you what was that project do you remember uh, well the the first uh, the first serious thing for me was the first music video I shot yeah um, was for a friend of mine that he's a rapper or rapper ish but is that the uh, one with the the rim rim light around the, his eyes? He has like a big blue eyes. He's looking at the camera with this. You know, it's kind of a dark place and. Uh, not. No, no, no. The ring light. Um, it w it was a the very 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 first music video I shot it was called um, Stallion uh, from this rapper Stallion Stallion. Mm -hmm. um, it was called Hard Times, mm -hmm. and I shot that with the Canon. Uh, like the, 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 the mini 30, DV, like the, the mini HV30, the Canon HV30, yeah. And I shot that, but here's the thing. Uh, when I got that camera, I, I didn't just use a camera. What I did was uh, I, I did some more research, and um, I went online and got a, an EOS adapter because with that camera, you, could, you know you can attach attachments to the camera. You screw in and... Mm -hmm with the default lenses. So I bought a, a still lens, a 1.8... Um, oh, 50? 1.8 lens, the same lens that we that I was just sh shooting your interview with. And you, with the adapter, you can screw that lens on to the Canon HV30 and get this uh, quote-unquote photography, oh, photography yeah. look, which was a pain in the ass because 
Number one, you need you need a lot of light to get a really decent looking picture from that camera with that lens attached to it. Uh, right. And here's the other thing, um, you know the Canon HV30, the LCD screen, yep. with that um, one point at one point eight lens, the picture came out upside down. Uh-huh. So that first music video I shot upside down, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's a learning curve because, you know, if you're following somebody that's um, on the left of the screen running to the right, you kind of got to go from the right of the screen, you know, panning to the left. Right. So right. that was a learning curve. But, um, yeah, that, that was the first camera I had, the Canon HV30. And I only shot two music videos on that. And then I upgraded to the uh, the Canon Rebel, which is my main camera now. But, yeah, uh, Stallion Hard Times was the first music video. And it was the first serious thing I, I did. Um, cause I, we shot and edited that music video within a week and yeah. then it landed on a, a major rap website called uh, hiphopgame.com. But yeah. that was, that was in 2009. 2009. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so then you, once, when you finished with that video, you, uh, you kind of, uh, waited to see what happened with it and then and then get feedback from the people who saw your video on their website and did you take notes from that for your next pro- next project or how did you well, evolve to your Yeah, the, the feedback, um feedback so I, I always look forward to the feedback. Yeah. Even I, I look forward to reading bad feedback. Um not that um uh, not to sound like I yeah. haven't received much bad feedback but that's what i look forward to the most right because i'm like oh so i'm gonna hate this project i want to see what they hate about it right uh but with any with anything you should you know with with that like i always uh i always took notice like i was always taking notes i was always seeing what you know who was going to say what you know why because i just wanted to know why but um, I only did music videos for like a, a couple of years, so mm-hmm. it wasn't like the first music video I did. I'm like, oh, now I have the script. Like, I didn't write a script. I was just like, what's the next music video uh, that we can do? So we did another one, and that didn't really it it didn't really come out that great because you know that when you plan for something and it doesn't happen, right. yep. it falls apart, and then you just you make do with what you got right so right. but yeah yeah like i always took notice of feedback especially um from the people like uh, oral feedback is a lot better yeah um took notice of of the feedback yeah and i having trouble the more i talk the more i have trouble remembering what you're yeah. asking <laughs> what you're asking no, me. i'm like fine, where, where am fine. i where am i going no basically what's was uh, just just to know what, where if you're going to uh, yeah. uh, after those those two if you if you said well now I want to do something else and what was that something else because I was checking your uh, your IMDb credits and as you know you know that doesn't mean that that's all you worked on you may work on another 25 projects it's, those are the ones who make the the cut but you know I have you here for. Uh, stuff in 2013 and up really and then be- before that between 2009 and 2013 did you say okay I'm gonna do I want to do something else besides movie videos yeah. uh, music videos did you say okay I want to do a documentary <coughs> I want to do fiction so what was your next well uh, I've always wanted to make a movie um, but uh, I, like where I live I told you this earlier like I, I really can't call on people to say hey let's make a movie like let's just I, I i don't know what we're doing let's just we'll figure it out let's let's just get the people together and let's make a movie like i i don't have that luxury even though most of the people i know just really don't have that many responsibilities um some of them do some of them don't but but i've always wanted to make a movie but i couldn't really do anything so i kept doing music videos until i think it was in 2012 uh early no early 2011 2012 when i was like all right i I gotta do something i gotta do something for me something that i could say that's mine i had total control it's my it's my baby so i was like well let me um you know let me let me do a documentary like 
it just came in my head like documentary why not you know i don't have to rely on actors and i especially don't have to worry about people acting badly which scratch that off i don't have to worry about you know finding an actor scratch that off i don't have to worry about uh paying anybody because if hey if i don't have the money and you're and saying, hey, well, you know, I want to be in this documentary, but I want to be paid. Well, I don't have the money, so, you know, we'll blur out your face. Right, right. So, I think a documentary is probably the, the best thing that I could have done. I mean, it was it was just a it was just a thought. It wasn't it wasn't like, oh, well, I can make this documentary, submit it, and yeah, it's gonna it's gonna get me somewhere. I just said documentary I, I gotta do something other than music videos uh, yeah. and I, I feel that you know what's a documentary it's something that's true um, you know despite the fact that it's being edited it's something that's true something that's happening in somewhere on planet earth right now or during that time but it's it's it happened right. so uh, documentary was probably the one thing that uh, the one thing that I, I could have done economically by myself. I couldn't pay anybody uh, for a film crew. I couldn't, you know, pay that. I knew that I would have to do it myself, pretty much. And uh, then, how did you come up with uh, the topic for your documentary? How did you pick? Uh, it was just because I w- uh, in Haverhill. I was living in an apartment complex, and then I remembered that, that, well, in the apartment complex that I was living in, there's a whole bunch of crap, a whole bunch of downtown areas I could have gone to, but I remember this comic book store called the Comic Book Palace, um, and it was it's like two minutes away from where I live, so I was like, you know what? Um... The more I kept thinking of documentary, well, to backtrack, the more I kept thinking of documentary, I was like, okay, well, I got to figure out what I could do because, number one, I don't want to travel a lot, and I didn't want to travel a lot. That, that was pretty much it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm like, all right, I got to think of somewhere where it's close by. The Comic Book Palace, that's close by. Uh, I don't have to travel a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll go there. I went in. I asked Glenn, the store owner. I was like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this documentary about your comic book store. Um, but I told him, I was like, I don't want to shoot it like all fake. I just want to come in there and shoot you guys and cut it. He's like, yeah, do what you want. And I was like, awesome. You know, great. So came in and, uh, you know, we made that, we made the documentary happen. Um, and that was in 2012? 2000, yeah, 2012. And you shot it for how long you you sh- actually shot the documentary? Was that like a day or a couple of days? That, that we I started shooting in July, yeah. um, and then I stopped shooting in February, uh-huh. uh, of February 2013. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing, during, I think, no, I think it was June and July. During June and July, uh, I... For some reason, the footage looked bad um, because it's my fault. Because um, I was shooting with the the Canon DSLR, I didn't, I didn't really know how to use it per se. Like I I knew how to hit record, yeah. uh, but the white balance, the the color, I was just like, uh, I'm gonna leave that alone. Let me just go in the store and shoot it. And spent so much time shooting the footage. Every time I shot the footage, I didn't look at it. I just put it away. Oh, right. And then when I went to look at it, I was like, what? And uh, I went back to Glenn. In the store, and I said, Glenn, um, I was like, some of that footage is bad. I'm just going to sh- reshoot it again. And it wasn't nothing. We didn't plan anything out. Right. I just went in there and shot what was happening. Um, but uh, f- uh, from pretty much August to February, that's when I shot and edited the entire movie. Oh, okay. Okay. So you really got uh, hard on editing uh, with your footage. You, you you edited right away. You didn't wait for it. You know, some people they just wait a while until they edit it. You just went right I, over the footage. I, I kept. Uh, I think I started editing. Uh, let's say from I think I started editing f- around October or November um, because I knew I wanted to get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Did you have a deadline to get it done, or that was uh, it more w- like something? It you wasn't want? a deadline. I, I think subconsciously, subconsciously, it was a deadline because of the film festivals. Yeah, I was right. brand new yeah. 
yeah, to without too. a box and I think it was just without a box. Yeah, without a box. And I was so brand new to that, so I'm like, what do what do I do? So I'm like, there's a there's a deadline for the Massachusetts Independent Film Festival. Right, right. I was like, oh, that's in March. I'm like, it's November, um, and I'm thinking, I'm like, all right, so I can have this edited before then. Right. And uh, I've always liked editing. Yeah. I think it's it's very easy. Um, it's not easy, but I like doing it. That I just say, yeah, it's an easy thing. You you know, do this. You know, and but uh, anyways, um, yeah, from November to February, I just edited. Even when I was recording a footage um, on Friday nights, I would record the footage and then start editing right away and mm -hmm. just trying to get it done um, to submit it. To just that film festival, the Massachusetts wow. Independent Film Festival. And that is that the uh, film festival you got your award from? You got a, you got you got a, an award from also an award winning. Yeah, award. yeah, but but you're wrong. It wasn't an award. It was awards. Awards. Ah, okay. okay. I'm, I'm, that's a joke. I'm kidding. No, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> that's the ego. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All this. Yeah. Remember what we were talking about? Right. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a crazy thing when it got picked. Um, I was just like, oh, oh, it got picked. I had a feeling it was going to get picked for one festival out of all of the festivals I submitted to. I was like, okay. one of them has to pick it. So I'm glad it was that one, which was the first one. Uh, and then when they say, oh, well, it's it's been nominated for an award, I was like, holy shit. I'm like, this, That's this cool. is great. That's, cool. That's great. And then when I win, I'm just like, all right. I was like... <sighs> That I did it. I I did um, I did the goal that I I, I gave myself. Um, if I said if I ever made a movie, I was like I want to make a movie, I want to show it to people, um, it, the screening because we had a screening, um, but I wanted to submit it to a festival, and I wanted to get picked just to be in the festival. Right. And that was the goal I had. That was it. But winning an award or winning a couple awards that yeah. that was a bonus oh, God, yeah. but the first the, the but the best thing anyways winning an award like winning an award for me i'm like all right whatever but to have a movie be picked to be screened in a in a festival yeah that you you won right there exactly same yeah, thing right. with the oscar when people are like i want that award it's like your mo they thought you were so good to be nominated for yeah, an award. Right. Even though if you didn't win, I'd be like, I was nominated to get this award. Oh, yeah. Which honestly, honestly to me, it doesn't mean anything. Right. I'm sorry, but yeah. I mean, no, if, I, mean yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. It's some some sort of a validation of uh, that you picked the right passion, that you you know you made the right choice by following your heart. You know, somebody else agrees with that on a way. You know, yeah. by giving you an award. Even though, like you were saying, the award may not be, you know, that important to you, but at least it's some sort of, a, oh man, you know, this is my heart. They are picking my heart because yeah. that's what they're selecting, really, because you put all of your heart and your soul in your project. Yeah, you put all that time, and then if they, if you, when you get that message, like, oh, congratulations, your film has been selected, you're like, yes, <laughs> regardless if it doesn't win. But after it gets selected, now you start thinking. Oh man, it's been selected. But what if it wins? What if it wins? What if right, right, you know? Right. That's where you start thinking. It's gotta win. It's gotta win something. Well, you know, I had a, a similar experience. We shot this uh, film for the Forty Eight Hours uh, Film Festival in New Hampshire in two thousand eleven, I think it was, or two thousand and twelve. And you know, uh, yeah, are you familiar with the format? Yeah. So yeah. you know, you get you get a genre, and uh, then you can change it once. But whatever you you get to pick the second time, you can't change. So anyway, we got fantasy, whatever. The director didn't like it, so we changed it, and we got silent film. And we were like, oh, uh, you know, silent film? What are we going to do? So anyway, we shot this film, and uh, you don't know if you're nominated on the uh, when they're doing the, the, um, the premiere of the films. You don't know uh, until you get they get to say the awards, you know, best actor, best director, best production, best story, best movie. That's the big yeah. award of the night. Yeah. So we didn't even know if we were nominated or not. But I thought that we were we had no chance to win just because of general. I mean, uh, we had a really good team, great director, good actors. You know, uh, we had like 30 people working that day with us. 
So when they called for best film, I I had you know I was I was, I was wondering who it was, and then yeah. it was us. So yeah. what's that feeling of, of like yeah. winning something? And uh, you know I get I got uh, a lead role in in that film, and I was like. Of course, you know, I felt part of something, you know. We, uh, as a team, won something, you know. When you yeah. have sport teams, they are, you know, raising those trophies, and you're one of them, you know. And it was really exciting to me. So, you know, again, the award itself, like you were saying, it's like, well, that's cool, but but it's the validation of yeah, following your heart. Get, you know? Yeah, and, and the fact that they're like, well, we thought your movie was very good, and we would like to screen it. Right. And it's kind of like, wow, out of... All those movies that get submitted, like they thought yours was good enough to be screened, you know. No, but that that is a, a nice accomplishment uh, because again, my I shot my first film, and again, it's my first film. It's not really good, but what I mean is, I send it to thirty festivals, none of them pick my 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 movie. So, you know, I kind of uh, yeah, but see that they're, how, they're, they're, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but yeah. there's some people they won't even submit to three of them if they get shot down. By right. three of them, they're like, well, forget it. It sucks. Oh, what's the point? It's like, no, dude, you got to keep keep throwing it out there. Keep throwing the darts at the wall, you know, right. at, at the dartboard or, you know. And just keep throwing them on there. You you, you know, you never know. You're going to hit something. Yeah. Like, you submitted to 30. 30, yep. Even uh, Chris Esper was telling me that he submitted Still Life, I think, to about the same. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it only got in, I think, to, uh, I think, three. I don't know. I'm sorry. He's told me this plenty of times. Yeah, but uh, he's like, yeah, it's it's like you can't be afraid to get shot down. Like, yeah, right. come on, man, being a filmmaker, it's all about failure. Oh, oh yeah, you know? it's about like my Michael Jordan says all the time. You know, I fail, I fail, I fail, I fail, I fail until I, su I succeeded. So it's yeah. so giving it a shot, giving it a shot. You got, you gotta shoot, you gotta shoot all you got, and you know, eventually. Something's gonna happen. Actually, you're gonna nail that basket, but you gotta shoot. You yeah, know? yeah. It's it's um, a lot of people just they get afraid to shoot, or if they shoot, they get afraid after. It's like you shot it. See, you know, see if it goes in or not. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And if it doesn't, you got plenty of opportunities to shoot another one. Right. You know. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, tell, tell me a little bit about this. Um, I, I, wa I wanted to ask you about that. That's uh, the com comic book palace documentary. That's kind of your, you know, your 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 big, um, you know, uh, say your 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 baby. You know, you were very happy about that. And what about the the other? Uh, the other ones, I'm just gonna ask you for the ones you have in IMDb, and we can talk about any other ones. I'm just so I can follow uh, something here. But uh, I have here the the Cole Reed TV series, and what what was that about? <laughs> Tell me. Uh, <laughs> was uh, that was uh, that was something that uh, there's so much backstory. Um, do you want me to tell you about it, or you want me to tell um, you some backstory? Well, you, it's you, up to you. Yeah, you've been involved in that in that uh, project as a cinematographer and as a, a director. Just tell me about. Uh, yeah, just tell me about the project. You know, whatever you want to say. If you want to go into much detail, you can. It's up to you, really. Or if you want to just. Oh uh, you know, well, uh, um, I mean, the project was. Um, it was pretty much like, foobard. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was on uh, TV, right? It, 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 it was on YouTube. Oh, okay. Let's just okay. say YouTube. I yeah. mean, if I was on TV, you, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, FUBARD. Um, because even Curtis Reed, um, he has some very choice words mm -hmm. to describe his feeling about the cold, cold read. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it was, just, it was just really bad. I mean... But I, I love Curtis. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. he's, cool, he's a cool guy. And that's one of the guys. Actually, I met Curtis through Brian. Uh, so uh, me and Curtis have been, we've been pretty cool ever since. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say about that. Perfect, perfect. And uh, so then we have another, another project in 2013. 
Uh, it's called Rise Up, and that's a video short. Oh yeah, yeah. That that was just that was like a demo reel thing for uh, Corey Spencer. You oh, you know him, yeah, right? That know, white that yeah that white guy. Uh, that, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we were actually worked together on the same movie. Yeah, yeah. Plague of Zombie. Yeah. yeah, blonde hair, blue eyed. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Total opposite guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, no, he was just he Corey messaged me through Facebook and said oh, I'm looking to get a looking to get a demo reel, and I and I messaged him back. I was like, oh, I got this idea. Uh, we could do something of you like in a gym working out and it was pretty it, it was almost it, it was like a, more like a promo reel right yeah. than a demo reel because it didn't really show him acting right. i mean yeah he posed a lot and all that but we filmed that at this uh this gym that he worked out at and shot it there it took maybe three hours three or four hours and you know he paid me which was awesome nice, nice. which was good i i told him i was like look I could do it for you. Here's the price because it's time and it's effort that you're putting in. And I also told him, I was like, look, this is going to look good for you. I was like, yeah, it's going to be great for you. It's going to look good. Trust me. This is something that I wanted to do. And he's like, all right, man. He listened to everything that I had to say. Mm -hmm. I listened to everything that he had to say that he wanted to do. And Mm -hmm. it was really good. It uh, It was my first demo reel. And... Uh, you know, one of the rare paying jobs, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. it's always good to get paid. Oh, yeah. um, Definitely. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then you have uh, M is for man- Mandible short. That's yeah, a short you yeah. Directed or, or uh, produce. Uh, you you were also the director of photography on that that short as well, right? So yeah, but, uh, M is for Mandible. That was for the ABCs of Death uh, Halloween contest. I don't know. If, do you uh, remember that? Uh, I might have heard of, but I, I, I wasn't there, I didn't submit it, I wasn't really involved with it, but I remember. Well, the, the, um, the thing of the contest is that they'll pick a letter out of the alphabet, so they'll pick the letter K, uh-huh. and so everybody has to submit, um, I think it's a, it's a, th- um, one to three minute film mm-hmm. revolving, a uh, horror film revolving around the letter K. So you could do K is for kangaroo and have a kangaroo killing people, or K is for kill. Right. You could kill people. Yeah. So that year's letter was M. So I did Mandible, and uh, when I when I saw the name Mandible, it was like the the whole story flashed in my head. It was like a flash. Like there's this girl that has bad teeth, the sharp jaggedy teeth, and but uh, she's tied up in a chair because she's got duct tape around her mouth and she escapes and blah blah blah. So I saw the whole story in like in like a flash, and uh, so I shot it with Curtis Reed again. Um, this girl, the girl that played the girl in the chair, uh, I don't give my characters names yeah. at all, um, and I don't like dialogue because the whole movie was pretty much silent, silent. except for Curtis, which had that one line of "I can't." Uh, I really thought this was this was the last time. Uh, so that girl that played the the whatever um i met her on the set of the equalizer we were both extras uh-huh. so i was like yeah i was like yeah i'm, I'm you know i'm a filmmaker and you know kind of yeah, you know right, when right, you say yeah. tell people yeah i'm, I'm a <clears throat> filmmaker, right, right. <laughs> filmmaker. <clears throat> yeah. yeah um so and she was from london and with that accent i was just like and i have my girlfriend and i'm just like <laughs> That accent, holy oh, shit! She's like, yeah. "Oh, I'm a your filmmaker. Oh, I love movie. I want to be in movies." I'm just like, "Oh, oh my no, god!" No. But uh, I said, "Yeah, I'm." You know, we we exchanged uh, yeah. emails and all that, and so uh, I told her, "I was like, oh yeah, I'm making this movie. Do you want to be a part of it? I can't pay you." It's that other thing too, like I really can't pay you, right, right. you know. But she's like, "Oh, that's fine." Uh, so she came. And uh, she, she was in it. And uh, the girl that did the make makeup was priceless, the nicest, priceless, the nicest. Uh, her name is Joanne, and I used to work with her in a call center. Yeah. And now she's doing makeup and everything, and she's doing a lot more things than I am. And so we did the movie in like a few hours. I told everybody, I was like, "You want to be a part of it? I can't pay you, but it's for a contest. And if we win, we'll split the money. Blah blah blah. Whatever." Um, and they all said yes, and we shot it in the basement of my friend's house. Uh-huh. So uh, it, that only took uh, 
like three hours. So yeah. I, I was constantly pumping the fog machine. I bought this fog machine <laughs> from Walmart for $7. Yeah. Just pumping the fog like every chance I get because I'm like, Tony Scott, Tony Scott. And, you uh, know, with the fog like... Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that was fun to shoot. I like shooting stuff like that. You know, I, no dialogue. Well, little to no dialogue. Yeah, I agree with that. I like let, those let, yeah, let, let the actors act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, it was a fun, it's a fun thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. And then we have another project we have for this last year, 2014, is Zone 3. That's another short. Oh, that was with uh, Ann Kulichik. Mm -hmm. Ann Kulichik, uh, who goes by the this pen name, Audrey Noon. Uh, I think Chris Esper set that up for me um, because we, me and Chris Esper were like, we talk all the time. And by talking, I don't mean by texting. I mean by actually talking. Like, I'll call him on the phone or we'll Skype. And I told him, I was like, yeah, I'm trying to, I want to do directing more and more. And he got back to me with, um, with this short movie. And he said, yeah, I know this lady who's who wrote a script and she's looking for a director and uh so i i yeah I, I said i would do it and asked me oh would you like to do it? and i said yeah so we shot that at tewksbury which is like 30 minutes away from where i live again location yeah. is always important especially when you're broke ass right. mofo you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. broke ass actor broke ass director broke ass anybody yeah you know if it's down the street it's That's good better so yeah <laughs> And, and again, you don't care how long you have to be there because you're like, hey, this place is like 20 to 30 minutes away from where I live. Screw you guys. I don't care. Right, you know, right. if everybody has a bad attitude, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no no attitudes on that set. Um, Zone 3, that was the first time I ever worked with, uh, uh, you know, air quotes, crew. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Phillips was the DP. Uh, Dave, I forget his last name. Dave was um, the sound guy. Or was it Mark? Or was it the other way around? No, Mark did the sound, and then Dave was the DP. So I'm sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I went in there and I told him I was just like uh, I saw all these people. I'm like, I, don't, I I do everything myself. I don't. I'm so not used to you guys not being here, uh, being here. But mm -hmm. they're like, no, no, we're cool, man. I was like, all right, um, you know. And at first, the the setup for that short film was set up like a. Um, a TV show because everybody had a camera. Mark had his camera, of course, if because yeah. he's a photographer and a, and a DP. And then Dave had his camera, I had my camera, so uh, we had it set up like three cameras uh, center, left, and right. And then when that first started, I was just like, I wasn't really feeling it because it just felt like too much like a TV show. So I was like, All right, guys, lose the cameras. You know, I, I took my camera and I told Dave, I was like, Dave, you shoot one half, I'm going to shoot the other half. We'll just go handheld. Don't go herky-jerky, you know, shaking the camera. Don't be a Paul Greengrass. Just <laughs> just hold the camera, you know, that's I, it. Just let your hand move. Let the weight, you know, balance everything. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So we shot that, you know, in a matter of hours. And um, I saw it I saw it on the, the link, but I know that it got accepted into a film festival, uh -huh. but then they pulled that they they reversed their uh, their decision. They said that it was accidentally picked. Oh wow! That's and weird. again, I heard that. Um, again, I think uh, I think it was Chris Chris Hesper told me he's like, yeah, they they told it it was an accidental pick. You know, yeah, it's really you know, it, it's sad because you know here we are again, we're donating our time. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like I've I've heard wanted to ask you about uh, you were t telling me about that project the M for me I'm sorry I, yeah the I mandible yeah. yeah yeah and that was kind of um, uh, kind of you, one of your last projects uh, as a director <laughs> so now then uh, a few questions I, I have for you is uh, on the acting side because even though it's not your main thing but you did some acting right a little bit of acting and um, I wanted to ask you about that uh, especially I wanted to ask just because it, I think it's really cool and me being an actor it will be very cool for me to have done that I never had the chance to do something like that but what was it like for you to be part of the equalizer 
how, how did you get picked? Did you, somebody uh, saw your photo and say, hey, do you want to play? Or? Yeah, right. Uh, well, uh, Boston Casting. Ah, uh, Boston Casting. Oh, okay. Boston Casting. You very well know that, right? Yes, yes. Um, no, I don't have a paid account, mm. but... Uh, I, don't, I don't have one either. Oh, okay, okay. And you don't even have to, but... Um, I think Boston Casting works really well if you don't have a full-time job, oh. but you're getting money from somebody right. that you can be able to go to extra work, yeah. go to do extra work all you want. So mm -hmm. if you have a pimp or a sugar daddy or a inheritance, right. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> doing extra work is fine, but if you got a full-time job, yeah. that's not going to happen. Right. So right. when I saw the Equalizer... On Boston Casting, I was at Denzel. When they when I read that, okay, the Equalizer, Denzel Washington. Oh, on on a such and such date, which is on a weekend or Friday, I was like, oh shit, I think I could do that. Maybe I could leave work early, go there. I was like, it'll work. So, uh, you know, got there and being on the set is just like, well, I mean, it wasn't really a set because they shot it in in Salisbury Beach. But what they did, they did add a few uh, game booths, yeah. which is pretty cool. Um, but uh, just being there, I was like, just the fact that I was like, all right, I'm 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 part of a major motion make oh, a yeah. major motion picture production. Oh my god! But I'm an extra, so extra is like the the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. So, no, but I mean, just being there and what yeah, if, people do. Well, yeah, you're just seeing all this stuff, like you know, you're seeing. I'm looking at the overhead lights that they hang um, with the with the crane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking at the cameras that they got, they look like they look like cannons, you know, those cameras, and looking at you know all the people that are just a part of the production you know people with the walkie talkies the director's assistants the, the uh just everybody there everybody has a job to do something and my job is just to stand there and pretend like i'm doing something that i would normally do but i wouldn't normally do it right, right. so as an extra you're just uh just yeah, like, doing that you know, thing right. and and the girl that was in mandible we were kind of partners we kind of stuck together so we played this husband and wife so we got to push a baby carriage oh, but yeah. that scene was cut because i did see oh, the really? i did oh. see the uh the equalizer in theaters yeah and i was like all right i'm looking for my part and yeah, you tell me i stood there from like what 6 p.m to 1 a.m yeah i know well but you got the credit you, i you the credit. i hope i did yeah, I, you I got the credit know. on on imdb and uh uh, that's awesome because uh, IMDb is, uh, you know, you want to be an IMDb and be yeah. there, especially independent filmmakers and actors like us. IMDb well, that, yeah, is, that, is your money. That's your currency that if somebody's going to pay you, that should be with a credit on IMDb. And I had an experience, a bad experience with, I shot a movie, uh, I was an extra, I played a cop, in a yeah. movie with Michael Madsen. You know Michael Madsen? Yeah, yeah. So, very excited. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to be on the credits. And I'm not. So I'm not. And uh, if you look at my uh, at my Facebook wall, uh, the producer of the movie tagged me, tagged me um, uh. a photo on that shoot. Well, you can see me on the background blurred, but that's me. Yeah. So she tagged me on it. So that's kind of my proof that I was in a movie with my that, That's good, though. At least, at least, at least something. At least she tagged you. Yeah, they should like me. So, and I asked her for, hey, you know, would you, could you, and could you be able to give me that credit? She never replied back to me. But what I mean is, like, that's very cool that you have a credit under your name because, you know. I didn't, I didn't check the movie. I just, I, you know, when you, when you're a part of a production and you just add yourself, you know, you do the whole IMDb, but I, I didn't, I think I added myself. I don't know if they gave me the credit. No, I think uh, prob probably, this is my guess, because I I actually uh, claimed that credit, I'm talking about to IMDb as well, Yeah. they give it to me. But you have it, because I checked your uh, IMDb profile and it's tied to your profile, so uh, that is, is something that they can, the production company can only ask for. Oh, okay. Know? Otherwise, like <clears throat> otherwise, like an uncredited. Yeah. You know. Credit. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's All awesome. Right. That's, that's awesome. A, well, the thing about the e I uh, working on the equalizer, I, I walked by Denzel like, we were no more than like five feet away from each other. Like oh, really? you know when they when they sell uh, background extra and then they say cut and then reset, right. reset is to go back to your original spot. 
Yeah. I had while resetting, I got to walk by Denzel, and it's like my face just was like a magnet <laughs> to his right. face. You walk by, and you're like, that's Denzel. Like I was so close, I could have tapped him on the shoulder. And did you? Uh, what What was kind of for you know your perception of being uh, next to a really huge uh, movie star? Did you have any kind of perceptions of like, did you capture anything in terms of like uh, the way he works or the way he interacts with the people when the camera is not rolling? Did you kind no, of... No, all I kept seeing was I'm like, that is Denzel Washington. <laughs> <laughs> that is Denzel. That's all I kept thinking. I'm like, and I'm like you know what? I'm taller than him. I and mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm taller than him. He's a big dude. Yeah, no, I'm just like, I'm taller than Denzel. I'm like, no, Den I'm like, that is Denzel Washington. And I heard him talk too. And oh, the, nice. the thing that I heard him say was, "Can I oh, get a coffee?" No, <laughs> that the, the, he was talking. He was talking to somebody, um, but he said, "Oh, you're gonna see me on the bench," but he said it with his Denzel voice, uh, you know. <laughs> nice. But that that's it. in hindsight, though, I wish I could have asked if if I could have met either the, the cinematographer or the director. And the director, um, Antoine Fuqua, you know, he's yeah. he's really been hit or miss. Um, a lot more miss, but I think with the Equalizer, he he hit it. You know, with Denzel, him and Denzel, they like it's perfect. Nice, nice, that's awesome, that's awesome. Anything else? Uh, that there's more. Oh yeah, no. The thing is, like you know, you and I, I, I bet we can spend hours talking, yeah. and I think we should uh, in the future and uh, through Facebook, and we should keep in touch and. I think you're a great guy and uh, you know we are kind of on some sort of the same boat in terms of being independent yeah uh, yeah filmmaker and an actor and uh, you know fighting, I think, fighting I think, our way and uh, I think know. we definitely agree on many yeah many points yeah definitely many I mean, points many many ideas I mean th this is just me can you imagine anybody else that you bring here like their response and again that uh, that's why I'm doing this documentary. Um, the documentary that I'm doing. Um, do, you which, have a, do you have a name for it? I, yeah, I titled it oh, uh, More Than a Weekend Thing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like how we're kind of, me and you are kind of in the same boat. Yeah. Like we work a full time job, so the only time we could do this is on the weekend. Exactly. Uh, there's some other people that have s jobs that they can only do it on the weekend. So, but it's kind of. It's kind of, it covers more than that. It's just more than a weekend thing, more than just a thing. So you can, uh, uh, how we were talking about, you don't tell people at work right. that you act. I don't tell people at work exactly. that I do filmmaking because exactly. you don't want that patronism. You don't want that, you know, that's your thing. That's like your your, your costume that you put on on the weekend, you know, yeah. with, with the hood covering your face and then you go, you know, jumping thing. around town so that that's your secret uh exactly. that, that's your secret identity that's your real identity yeah the actor yeah your, your true self you know i follow this one of my favorite photographers photographer's name is salvatore Cincota. he's a guy from original from brooklyn and uh he uh, says that we are weekend warrior what weekend warriors until we can quit our jobs until then we kind of some we are you know independent people yeah. We are weekend warriors because that that's when we can fight for our dreams. You know? And that that's that's what I hate. That's why, honestly, uh, that's why I hate filmmaking right now because I can't do it full time. Yes. I would love just to get paid. If I can get paid my paycheck, to, yes. but just being a filmmaker, I'll be I'll be happy. You, I'll be the happiest. You could just pay me. I'm telling you, you can pay me what I get paid at work. Yeah. Yeah. But just say, hey, all right. Instead of doing what you're gonna do at work, you're a filmmaker. Right. But we're going to pay you what you get paid at work. You know, just to do this full time, just to get a paycheck for it, it would be perfect. But yeah. we're just weekend warriors. And yeah. it sucks because the weekend comes and goes so fast. But then right. the week is just here to stay exactly. forever. You oh, know, it's, yeah, like that, yeah. that, it's like that in-law that you don't like or that family no, member that you like no. this person. Yeah, you go to <laughs> your Christmas night and you know that that person's going to be there. Yeah, and, and they're sitting there with like the... getting to the house and that car is parked. They're right the, there. You, know, you walk uh, in and they have that cup of alcohol in their hand yeah. and they're like, hey, yeah, and you're like, you... Like, like, that's <laughs> the only thing you don't want to see at Christmas night. And then you see that, that person yeah. there and it's like... Oh. I stay away from everybody, dude. <laughs> on, on our holidays, I'm like, don't leave me alone. Yes. I wish after uh, after I graduated high school or while I was in high school, I could have said, you know, buddy, go to film school, go to full sale, go to somewhere, just go to film school, film school, film school. And who knows, maybe it would have been different, but 
now it's like, do I want to go to film school or I am in film school? I can just. Oh, uh, you know, I I've heard many people saying uh, the best thing about film school is the connections you make. That's it, because all they teach you, you can learn it online. Yeah, but so. the thing is, about not being in film school and making independent movies is all the connections you can make, which right. is the same thing, you know. Exactly. And yeah. you make friends, you you know. And I'm Brian Casey's movie. I met a whole bunch of people. I met JD. I met uh, Dave, the sound guy. Uh, I met some other actors, but yeah. you still met people. I met Bernie. I met um, Bradley. Bradley Rhodes, who's in a movie called P "Please Punish Me," which I'm editing for Chris Esper. That that is networking. Here's Chris Esper. A lot of people know him. He's done a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and he gave pl the task to edit his his uh, short film please punish me to me which he knows me mm -hmm. so that's kind of like that's right. networking we're oh, networking yeah. you know within our own circle yeah. but at least you're giving other people a shot you know oh yeah no, as long as you keep you have to keep doing that keep doing that. they always say that uh, overnight success takes 10 years you know so yeah, I gotta keep going, keep going, and you eventually you will become uh, successful. You know, uh, what what the people who are not in the in our industry understand for success. But you know, as long as you're doing it, you are already successful. You know, so yeah. from that that point, uh, so you need to keep it. Just keep doing it. Keep well, doing the, it. yeah, that, that that's the thing too. Is um, man, I'm I'm I get lazy and I get frustrated because. Same thing with the comic book palace. I'm like, I got to go there, stand in this store, and shoot these guys talking about God knows what. But you know what? I did it. And oh, yeah. Because you, you do. It's it a is, love and hate relationship. It is paving uh, your future road, which you cannot see right now because you're here. But by doing these miles, you'll have enough training yeah. to you, you don't, reach you don't, this point. You don't know what's ahead of you. Like, exactly. you're pay, you said you're paving the road, right? So... You can only see what's in front of you. You can't see down the street. If you saw what's down the street, yeah, you would eat. That'll change your whole life forever. Yeah, and some, it takes the fun out of it because if you know yeah, that you're you, gonna get here, you're not gonna. Say, you don't know what's going on. Yeah, so, you don't know what's going on. If so you, you you have no idea what's in front of you, so yeah. paving paving the street in front of you, it's just like one, just one slab at a time or whatever, whatever. Yeah. However you pave the street, yeah. you know. Yeah. So uh, tell me where we can find you. Tell me your website. I checked your website. Uh, that's the Squarespace, right? Uh, yep. It's. I, 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 yeah, I got a hard, I got a terrible memory. Of, it's uh, FelipeJorge.squarespace.com. Yes, that's where you can find me. That That's the website. They only take $10 a month, so I'm not too, I'm not worried about it. It's fine. Yeah, uh, I checked your website. The website is pretty, pretty cool. I read your uh, bio. It's, uh, it's a nice one-page bio, and I checked your uh, very cool reel that, from 2003 that you made. Yeah. Where you showcase many of the projects you did, and uh, it's pretty cool, too. I like your, your style. I can see your style of really live camera, right? Yeah. I, I, tried, I tried not to, uh, you know, people like the Verite. Yeah, doing handheld is, it's okay. It's fine, yeah. but it's oh. just like it's yeah. just whatever whatever I'm feeling. That's you, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you have to be you, uh, you know. If you want to have a shot that succeeding, you have to be you because people will like you for who you are, and people will help hate, hate you for who you you are not. Ex exactly. And uh, so tell me the uh, your Facebook is facebook.com. My slash. Facebook is uh, what is it? Facebook. Slash forward? Uh, it's forward slash, <coughs> forward slash and then it's something else. Fi uh, filmmaker Phil. Filmmaker Phil. And I did Filmmaker Phil um, because, yeah, I've done music videos, but that doesn't mean that I'm not a filmmaker. Yeah. So I work with a camera, I edit. I'm a film, you're a filmmaker. Plain yeah. and simple. Mm -hmm. Plus, I did that because I didn't want uh, people in my town to find me. Because right. the thing about Facebook. If you're gonna use it, use it for use it to do something. Don't use it just to talk to your friends and family members, cause that's yeah. that's stupid. It's, oh yeah, it's get, a tool. It's a tool. It, exactly, it's a tool. So, with Facebook, filmmaker Phil, I'll just connect with some actors and filmmakers, and that's it. Yeah, and pretty much what I do too. Yeah. I have some of my families and friends, but I mean, my main goal is just to connect with all the filmmaking world, actors, directors, writers, whatever. Yeah, and even though. 
you know, it may you may not be posting something important or you may not open a book and say, you know what, I'm going to post that quote for the day or whatever. You know, you're, you're posting something. Regardless, it's like, right. I don't, like, how we're on Facebook. I, I don't, I... I never, I've never known you over the years, but if you're posting something about what you're doing, I'm like, yeah, but that, I'm like, that guy's an actor. I know he acts. Right. That's, exactly. he's doing, he's doing something. I, he's not some, some guy I know down the street that's like, oh, Saturday night, about to hit it up. Like, <laughs> what, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, I feel the same way. You know, Facebook is a way to kind of uh, broadcast your shots to the the basket, and some of them you may miss or fail, but you know at least you're, you know, people can see that you're shooting. It's one of yeah, the yeah. Things. Look, I I have no problem with unfriending somebody, and it's not because I'm not oh, your yeah. friend. It's just because I find your posts a little annoying, and you don't need to make a post with 50 hashtags. Right. They all relate to the same subject about what you're posting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Oh, well. It's ridiculous. Like if we sat here, oh, I'm I'm gonna do a selfie. We're drinking wine. I don't. Have, you know, me and Ben drinking wine. Hashtag grapes. Hashtag good right. time. Hashtag right. cup of wine. Hashtag yeah, wine. Ha hashtag wine. Sangria. Hashtag right. merlot. Hashtag. It's like, come on, just like, I I I get it with one hashtag, but even yeah. with a hashtag, I'm like, that kind of like. Yeah. Me. That just that kind of downgrades human intelligence when you have yeah. to hashtag. I, I understand the hashtags uh, work, but I just don't. I don't use it, but I understand it. I just don't know uh, who, how people really use them. I mean, not not the people who post them, but yeah. the people who are. Is anybody searching for that word? Well, you don't. You know what I think a hashtag I is? I think when you make a long post and then you do a a, a hashtag, I think that's you summarizing the entire post. So either take out the hashtag and let us read this post right. that has to, that comes to a beginning, middle, and end, and leave out the hashtag, or just put that put the hashtag, or don't even post anything. Yeah, because yeah. people want to they, they 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 go fishing. I I did this post of uh, somebody fishing and saying uh, with a text like ah let me see how many likes and comments I can get today. People fish for Facebook comments and likes all the time they it's like they're meant uh, mentally fishing like oh let me let me throw out this post oh i'm gonna work on a screenplay today they're casting the reel somebody says oh what screenplay you're you're reeling that fish in and yeah yeah, yeah. it's like give me a break you don't stop it <laughs> you know Oh man! Well, uh, do you do you have a Twitter handler? Or uh, I I like I do have a Twitter handler. I think I think it's the same name as my Facebook filmmaker Phil, but I may get rid of that because I I don't really go on Twitter. I only go on Twitter for the Huffington Post and you know Kevin Smith tweets or Joe Blow like any any movie website that I like following. I'll go on Twitter and just read that. But otherwise, I don't I don't really tweet. Yeah, yeah, I mean, either. I have an account just because, but I follow a few people, but, you know, just... Yeah, it's, it's not it. really, um, it's not as big as it was. Before, yeah, yeah, but I, it's still something, it's something that I'm holding on to because right. I, I do, I do like it because it's just, it's short and sweet and you get to the point. Right. Facebook, man, if you want to type a book, you can yes. type a book, right. you know, right, right. so it's, it's kind of, I kind of like, I kind of like both. I do like the Twitter. Yeah, if Twitter, filmmaker Phil, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, one thing I wanted to say is like uh, I found some cool music for the podcast that is uh, what is it called? Common custom comments. I can I can remember that. It's not the paid song, but as long as I name the guy, I'm I'm cool. So created comments. Yeah. With a created comments license. So I talked to the guy and he said, No, that's fine. No, all you gotta do is just mention my name. So I just want to say I'm gonna be mentioning his name later because. To have it on with me, but I'm gonna add that later. Yeah, yeah. So well, yeah, you could you could edit that, right? Yeah, 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 I can edit that later. And here's the edit. So our theme music is provided by PodcastThemes.com, and it was composed by Mark Blasco. And the name of the theme is called Free Theme Number Two. Thanks so much, Mark Blasco, and thanks so much, podcastthemes.com. 
So well, I think that uh, it's been fun. Yeah. And doing doing both interviews, right? When I yeah, and the documentary was very, very yeah, fun very for the cool. documentary, and then for the red interview. And then we did a few uh, headshots, which were fun with your friend, because you, you didn't come along. You no, came with a good friend, right? I brought my little dog Lily. Lily. She's four years old now. She's just laying on the floor, yeah. but when we get home, she's gonna <laughs> do uh, all the things. We'll play with her, and then hopefully she'll go to sleep. Yeah, she's very cute, very cute. She looks like a yeah. cute Ewok, and uh, she's very, very cute. And she's been very nice. I mean, she yeah. didn't bark. She didn't do anything. No, we're in the we're in the freaking like mountainside in, <laughs> right, in, yeah. in New Hampshire, so there's nothing to bark at, you know. Right. It's just, just us. <laughs> it's just uh, it's just your little heater here, and uh, she's on the floor, and then that's it. Nice, awesome. Well, Phil, thank you very much for coming over, and uh, it was fun. And you're a good guy, and uh, I like to, I like your passion. That was, uh, that was actually what wanted me to interview you because uh, I feel that I have the the same passion uh, more on the acting side. But I think we we definitely need. Uh, you are a, you you are an inspiration to me. Uh, you know, following your heart and. Uh, and um, I wish you good luck and we, uh, should, thank you. we should stay in touch. Uh, thank you. I'm not even an inspiration to myself because it's like, it's so hard for me sometimes when I'm like, you want to be a filmmaker, right? That means you have to go out and work. But I'm tired of my job. I just want to stay home and, yeah. you know, to put me on a massage table or something. Like, I just want to stay home and relax. And But it's yeah. again, it's that weekend thing, that weekend warrior. Like, you like, you, you got to go out there and like, nobody's going to find you. Yeah. You, oh, but I mean, you, uh, you are somebody who's doing something, and you know, to do we something. know we know so many people who uh, talk a lot and they, they don't do they don't do something, and you know I, there's something f to be saying for for you that you're following your your heart. Yeah, and, just, I mean, you're an inspiration to me, uh, like many other people that inspire me. But you know, you are one of those people that I I see you fighting for your dream, and it's and, uh, yeah, it's 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 tough. I mean, especially when, when you're working full time. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like now we have to, until we can make enough money out of our passion, then we have to uh, fight. Uh, yeah, that, that's all I want to do. If, if I can, if I keep thinking I'm like somebody just from California, see my YouTube or some, see my documentary and just say, hey, Felipe, I like your movie. Come work with well, us. And I'm just know, like, it can happen. It can happen. It happens for other people. Yeah. Why wouldn't... I mean, there is somebody... It's always somebody who wins the lottery. Right? Yeah. Always. But somebody once said... I don't know who said this, but somebody said, you know, you don't have a chance if you don't if you don't go and buy that ticket. Again, I'm not uh, recommending people to get into the lottery ticket thing because, you know, whatever. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, like, you have to play to have a chance. So as long as you keep moving forward with your dream, yeah. I think that you're gonna you're gonna get there. You know, it I happen. I hope so. But this documentary, uh, this documentary uh, again, the title is more than a weekend thing. Like it's something that I I, I know I can't make in like a few months. Yeah. But it's something to keep me busy because the more interviews I can get, and then when I start to get footage of you know projects being made. The more I feel better about it, but right now I'm just like I only got like a few interviews. There's other things I want to do. I won't be able to do them, or maybe because I don't want to do them. And I'm just like, <sighs> some days, uh, some days you j I just get tired. But then, some days I'm just like, you know what? This this could be it could be really great. It uh, could be. And the other the other cool thing about your project is that the more people you get involved with, you know, people that you are interviewing. Those people are gonna show your documentary to their friends. They're gonna share your. I will share your documentary on my Facebook feed. So I know that, you know, let's say I have 300 friends. Well, yeah. I know that 10 will watch it. And it's know? gonna be free. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to seek distribution. I'm not. I'm just gonna put it online for free. I think it'll be Vimeo because Vimeo has a better quality. I, I don't know the whole thing with YouTube and Vimeo, but yeah. maybe YouTube or uh, who cares? It's just gonna be for free. I'll put it out there, yeah. and you could watch it. 
That's it. Money. I'm not looking to get rich and famous. Just looking for an opportunity to no, get a job. And that's the thing. The more people you involve, the more people will watch it because their friends will watch it. So let's say you interview a total of 50 yeah. people. So then each of those people will share that. And let's say eight, uh, eight to ten people yeah. will watch it. So that is, you know, whatever, you know, 5,000 views. Or yeah, whatever. you're absolutely right. So from yeah. all of those people watching, one of them may have... Uh, they have somebody. Connection. They have somebody, yeah. yeah. And you never know. So yeah, until you don't play that game, you have no chance. But if I you know. play the game, you know, for instance, I have a friend, you know, my favorite band is Megadeth. You know, grew up with Megadeth, love Megadeth. So a friend of mine is a personal friend with name and thing. I mean, not just a personal friend. They talk over the phone, they text each other. So what I mean is like, who would have thought that, yeah. you know? And what I mean is like, I'm this one connection away from meeting from no meeting yeah. them with the same Muslim, which I don't know, who knows, I probably never will, but my point is like, the more people you involve in your documentary, and well, you have yeah. a better chance that a movie, because a movie you have 10 actors, right? Yeah. But on a documentary you have 50 people, you know? Yeah, so and then, again, with having so many people, not everybody's gonna make the cut. That's the thing about yeah, documentaries. I, I, you may be inserted into this segment. You may be inserted to the whole uh, to the whole documentary. Right. Who knows? But again, it's what editing. It's not because you were lousy. It's not because you weren't pretty. It's just. Oh yeah. It's yeah. just because oh, oh, you know. Exactly. No, I know exactly what. You and mean. you gave me a lot. You get a lot of great answers. So oh, your answers yeah, were yeah. very. They're very good. So, um, not. I don't take sides. I'm just. I just yeah. want to see what you what you feel like. What what you're feeling. What's your opinion? You gave me your opinion. I got it. I can go home. Right. That's it. Yeah. I'm not saying, well, Ben thinks he's, right, you know, right. oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to edit it be like, oh, Ben doesn't like, uh, Ben thinks that more French people should get uh, roles. And, right. Yeah. Right. It's, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Right. There should only be one person, one French person, besides Van Damme. And that's, <laughs> right. that, that's Ben. No, but he's not even from French. He's Belgium. Belgium, right? yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, Phil, Maker Phil, uh, thank you very much for coming. It was yeah. my pleasure. I had fun, and uh, it was it was it was really fun talking about something we love. You know, yeah, right? Too. Every time you have a chance to talk with somebody about your passion, it's 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 fun. Yeah, you can so, go you can go for hours, and for the hours. thing is, yes. we can't because yeah. you. I'm in your house with your wife. Right, yeah, but no, it it was fun, and uh, so we'll, we'll keep in touch, and uh, well, thank you for coming yeah. again. And I'll let I'll let you know when everything's all done. It it probably be you know maybe yeah. next year. Or when oh yeah, no, the whole I know, thing I is know. done. I, I'm I'm gonna take a little while until I post this this guy because I need to go over. Yeah, but when uh, when, you, will, when, when you're when you're in a project though, um, I'll probably just I'll I'll ask you or just just let me know what's going on so that way I could just film. Yeah. Get other people, you oh, know, yeah. just shoot a production. What's going on? How does that look, you know, oh, yeah. for the independent world? Because, again, you can yeah. tell people at work, I was in a movie. They're going to think, oh, the big Hollywood lights and trucks. No, it's like we're outside with one camera and a couple of things. That's it. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah. So any, any production you're part of or... Anything, yeah. just just let me know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Uh, um, and if you want, I can. Uh, we'll talk. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more after the show. But if you want, I can uh, hook you up with uh, coming to one of the Black Zombie shoots. If you want, or you want to talk to the director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll hook you up. So. Yeah, I could just get footage and ask people questions and everything. And if you want to be part of the movie, if you if you don't mind playing a, a zombie. Hey, I'll get you a role. Yeah, we'll zombie. see. We'll see what's going. Yeah, there's a couple of my friends who already play zombies. So if you are interested, it's up if, to you. If, you if I can get a cool death scene, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, we we'll still have forty percent of the movie to shoot. So wow, uh, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you again. Yeah. Uh, thank you yes. for coming. We're right. shaking hands. We're shaking hands we're right shaking now. Hands. Yes, and we're kissing each other on the cheek. Yes, yes. <laughs> you, know, you can't see that, but that's uh, that's happening. Yes. All right, Phil, thanks so much. All right, thank you. Bye. If you want more of the Red Interview podcast, go to theredinterview.com or bentolosa.com, B-E-N-T-O-L-O-S-A.com, where you'll find Ben's latest career news, 
interviews with people from the movie and photography industry, his books, and much, much more. Follow Ben on Twitter at twitter.com ben.tolosa or on Facebook at facebook.com ben.tolosa. Until the next Red Interview, thanks for listening.